I'd be the first person to admit that I'm not actually a technical person. I, I very rarely know what the metrics mean in sound engineering and so on. And some people are daunted, like me, with all these facts and figures and, and things and letters and so on. And I've kind of learnt them as I've gone along. And I always say in voiceovers, it's a bit like driving a car. You don't need to know how the car works. You don't need to know the mechanics to be able to get from A to B and drive it. And it's the same with sound recording for your voiceovers. You don't need to know necessarily how the mic works or what the, uh, what the levels are technically to get a good recording. You can still do that because you use these things, your ears. And I'm a great one in just working with your ears to see if something sounds good. And if it sounds good, chances are it probably is. That's my number one motto when it comes to uh, when it comes to sound engineering. Now, if you're doing an audio book or something like that, sometimes ACX particularly, which is run by Audible, they come back with your recording and say, ah, no, 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 the RMS levels are wrong. And that freaks people out quite understandably. And I've spoken to a couple of sound engineers and even they were puzzled by RMS levels. And they say, well, we don't really need them. That's very, very technical. And uh, these are established sound engineers. But I, I've deduced that actually all it means is your sound is either too loud or too soft. Usually, more often than not, it's too quiet. And one of the ways you can get that quietness boosted is by using normalize. And normalizing will kind of give it a bit of a kick and bring it up to a, a, a level that you've predetermined. So I'm going to take a look at how to normalize using Audacity. As you can see from this waveform, it all looks quite narrow, doesn't it? The waveforms themselves are not nice and fat, which you'd expect them to be. So it's fairly quiet. I can probably just barely hear it in the background. So it's recorded at a sort of fairly low level, really. Now, if I want to instantly boost that evenly, I can use Normalize. So what I do is I go to Effects, which is in the toolbar at the top, and then come all the way down to Normalize here, spelt with a Z, and then it will give me a figure. Now, keep this one here, remove DC offset. You just want to, to leave that as it is. And here we want to normalize peak amplitude too. And then you can change this value if you want to. I always start with minus 3 dB because I think that's a good kind of solid amplification. But some people might want to go louder. Now, the interesting thing is, the lower you go, because it's a negative number, the lower you go, then the louder it will become. But I'm going to start at minus 3 dB. Now, just watch the waveform here and see what happens when I normalize to this figure of minus 3 dB. There we go. Nice and fat. This is a test recording. So there we go. Um, what you can do is you can repeat that and just keep going on. Or you might want to try normalizing slightly louder. And to do that, you go back to normalize and altering this figure again. So let's just go back and see the original waveform, the quieter waveform. So I'll just take us back to that one there. And now let's apply a much louder normalization process and we'll go for minus 1 dB, negative 1, and now look at it. Even louder, look. This is a test recording. Interestingly, because the same amount of amplitude is applied across the whole of the recording, then the dynamics aren't changed. So it's not like if you compress something. So compression is, is different, really, because that will squash up the quieter notes and bring down the, uh, the louder ones and put everything into a sort of narrow band so it's really punchy and so on. The dynamic range shouldn't change with the normalizing. It's just basic, basically boosting 
the uh, the amplitude, the volume, to your target norm, as it as it were. So I I struggle myself to get my head around it, but all I know is it works. And if you're uh, presented with a, a, a situation whereby ACX uh, say, oh, your audio book is too quiet, or they start quoting the RMS levels, just read between the lines. And usually it means it's just too quiet. Now, interestingly, you can also reduce the volume using it if it's too loud. Let me show you. If I think this is just a little bit on the loud side, what I can do is normalize the other way. So currently, if I just go back into the normalize function, I see it's at zero dB, and now I just want to reduce it to minus three dB. There we go. It reduces the volume. See that? It narrows the waveform. I hope that helps you get to grips with normalization and how it can help you boost that volume evenly and also reduce it. But mostly you'll be using it to just give that volume of yours a little lift and to meet the requirements, particularly when it comes to audiobooks, where often the, uh, the criticism that comes back is that it's too quiet. All right. Thanks very much for watching today. Look after your voice and see you next time.